Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Ronan, and today, there's a slight chance that I have some blood right here. I don't know if there is. I tried looking at my phone, I couldn't see, but if there's a little bit of blood splatter-ish going on here, I just had a bloody nose. I don't know why. It happens to me just in the most random times. I'll wake up, I'll be like, ah, oh, what a lovely day. Wrong. I was wrong. It was not a lovely day. There's blood all over the place. So if there is, I'm sorry, it's probably really gross. I tried looking at my phone using my camera. I didn't see any, so hopefully it's not. But if there is, I'm sorry. But today, we're going to be going over the top 10 cars that were the biggest disappointments in the car community. Obviously, this is cars from you, the 90s and up because I'm a pretty young guy. I'm 23 years old, so I only really know those cars. So if you're like an older gentleman and you know a car from like the 70s, that was a big disappointment. I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't know anything about those cars, so I don't want to, you know, put them here. But either way, let's get right into the video with number 10. Coming in at number 10 is the Chevy Camaro fourth generation. This is the Catfish Camaro. Was a pretty, 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 pretty mid, man. It did, I will say, the fourth gen Camaro came out with the very first LS motor in a Camaro, which is a big step because obviously, as we all know, the LS motors are very loved nowadays. One of the most popular, it probably is the most popular motor in the world, but the car itself just didn't do it for the rest of the community. The main takeaway it was it, is it was ugly as hell. It really was. It was better for performance than the third generation Camaro. Um, and at the time, Camaro guys didn't really understand the direction that Camaro was going at this point in time. And so they didn't really get that, okay, in future, the Camaro is going to be more towards just big, bulky American muscle car, whereas the third gen Camaro was more small. But it just doesn't, it doesn't make up for it. And it was a big disappointment. If it didn't look like a catfish, if they just did better with the design, the car would have been great. But they just, they, they messed it up. Coming in at the number nine spot, however, is going to the wonderful Audi S4 B8. The B8, has, and you're going to have to hear me out because there's probably a lot of you guys on this channel that either have a B8 S4 or they want a B8 S4. And it makes sense to want one of these cars. They are cool cars, but they were a disappointment. And the reason why is because the S4 line really was always something amazing. And honestly, they just kept getting better and better performance wise. The B7 had 340 horsepower in a naturally aspirated V8. That's mind boggling. But then the B8 came out. The B8 came out. And it actually dropped in horsepower from the last generation, and it went down to 330. Now, that's not a horrible drop, but the fact that it dropped at all is is, is just sad. Everything else was better. It was a better interior, better ride quality. In my opinion, it looked better. It handled better. But the, the, the fact that the car was now slower <laughs> around a track than the previous S4 was a disappointment to the community. Especially when you're doing Euro cars. Like, you gotta... Audi. You got to keep improving in lap times if you're doing Euro cars. Like a Chevy Camaro can get away with having a worse lap time because they're straight line speed cars. Audis, no, you got to do good. Coming in at the number eight spot, however, is going to the Mazda Miata NC. The Mazda Miata NC is kind of here for the same reason that the Catfish Camaro is in the sense that it's just ugly, but it does get a little bit higher on the list. It's a little bit more of a disappointment because the Miata line has always been kind of lightweight obviously, but this one wasn't. It weighed 2,400 pounds, which kind of completely goes against the whole Miata name, uh, whereas all the other Miatas were weighing below 2,200. It was a heavy-ass Miata, and people didn't like that. On top of that, the looks didn't help at all either. It looked very weird compared to the other Miatas, and people were just upset about that. They got at least the Catfish Camaro. Yes, it looked horrible, but it did get better in terms of performance from the previous generation. The Miata didn't. The NC Miata was just worse, and people just hated that. It's a good car, don't get me wrong. I do like the NC Miata, but it's just not a good Miata. Next up at the number 7 location is the BMW M5 E60. The M5 in general has always been an incredibly unreliable platform uh, for the most successful of people. They don't really have to worry too much about whether or not their car is going to be reliable. But at the same time, if you're buying an M5, you're probably going to want some sort of reliability out of it. Whereas the M5 E60 just, it just didn't have that. It had a V10 in it, which is crazy. The car was crazy. It had a V10 making 500 horsepower in a sedan. That's crazy when it ran. But the V10 need to be replaced like every 30,000 miles, which is crazy. These cars are so unreliable. One of the most unreliable cars that BMW's ever made. On top of that, it didn't really look that special either. Like the E39 was a beautiful looking car. The E34 was a beautiful looking car. And then the F series that came after the E60 was a beautiful looking car. The E60 though, just didn't really have that. 
it's just a very lackluster m5 and it's still a good car if it wasn't incredibly unreliable but m5s are already incredible cars so you had to really like one up it especially if you were going to make it this unreliable and i just don't think they did coming in at number six is definitely the most one of the most recent uh disappointments with the toyota supra mark 5 this one's interesting it's a lot different than the other ones that we've gone over so far because the mark 4 supra was obviously amazing everybody liked the mark 4 supra nowadays everybody on tiktok thinks they're different so they act like they don't like it but everybody likes it and everybody wanted the return of the supra but when it came back it had major flaws it looked nothing like the concept car first of all which was a beautiful car they called it the ft1 and everybody was super excited for that car then it came out and it looked way worse but most importantly they had a bmw engine in it which i personally don't care about at all to be honest i love bmw i think bmw is one of my is my one of my favorite car brands tied with nissan but it makes sense why people were so upset that the car didn't come with a Toyota motor when the old Mark IV was so popular because of the motor. Nobody really cared about the looks. Nobody cared about how the car handled. The Mark IV Supra was loved because the motor was incredible. So obviously we, we wanted another incredible Toyota motor out of this car, but they gave it a BMW. Now the BMW motor they did give it is incredible. It's a great motor. And so, it, you know, it's still a good car. But in terms of like its legacy, it doesn't live up to it. Coming in at the number five spot is going to the brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. This one is completely self-explanatory. I shouldn't have to explain to Ford how they messed up on this car, but I will because they're idiots. The old Lightning was awesome and was incredibly fast for a truck. It had a great motor in it. The new one is pretty fast too, don't get me wrong, but it's not awesome. And instead it's electric. It doesn't have a cool motor in it anymore. Now it's just an electric car. That's what they think lightning stands for. No, lightning back then stood for going incredibly blisteringly fast in a truck. Okay, that was cool. Now putting an electric motor in your truck does not make it cool. That does not make, they should have used like light bulb or something, not lightning. That just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't live up to the Ford F-150 Lightning. The people that bought the old F-150 Lightning liked it for its just incredible. It's like the same reason why people would buy the Hellcat powered Durango, right? It's crazy as a huge horsepower motor that makes a truck somehow incredibly quick. This is not what we wanted with the return of the Lightning. This is not a Lightning. It's a light bulb. Name it the light bulb. I don't, I just looked through my list real quick and I realized I don't have this car on here. So I also want to make an honorable mention to the Mustang Mach-E really quick. Ford, what were you doing? What are you, what, what is your problem? Just stick to what makes people like you, man. Anyway, number four is the Acura Integra. This one physically causes me pain since I own an Integra. I own a DC4 Integra and I love that car. But the new Integra is just not what the Integra stood for, in my opinion. Yes, the Integra back in the day was kind of just a beefed up Civic, just like how the new Integra is. But the new Integra doesn't have enough fun parts on it to make it any different from just buying, honestly, an Accord or a TLX. I, I know it sounds crazy, but there's really no reason why you should buy the Integra over one of those cars right now. And that kind of doesn't make any sense. Now, I did see a little bit of a teaser from Integra for a, the Integra Type S. And if that comes out, that would be really cool. But the, 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 the base model Integra that we have right now is just not a cool return. It really isn't. It, it, it kind of sucks because Acura Integra is, is a very popular JDM car out there. And this one came out and it's almost like they just tried to get a like cash grab attempt out of the Integra name. And that's never how Honda's been. Honda's always never really cared about whether or not their performance cars sell well. They just want to make the best cars. And with the Integra, that's kind of what it seems like they were going for. And I really hope they change it with the Type S. Coming in at third place is going to the wonderful Mazda RX-8. This car has been a punching bag for quite some time now. And I'm adding on to it, okay? I need to get my training in. I got to get my swings up. But here's the thing. My favorite car ever in the entire world is the FD RX-7. Not just for the amazing looks, the cool taillights, the odd motor, but it was a great track car. It was incredibly lightweight, had a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. The RX-8, it really was a good sports car. I'm not saying it wasn't. It was a good sports car. But it was literally just so much worse than the FD RX-7, which should never happen. It sh that should never happen. A pre like we talked about with the S4B8, if you're going to add on to your generations of cars, it should be better than that last generation. The RX-8 was not better than the FD RX-7. It was worse in every way. And that is just mind boggling to me. In my opinion, it looked worse. It was heavier. It had less horsepower. It handled worse. It was more unreliable. The interior it was obviously better and the ride quality was better but that that's it and that does not that does not hold a cake to the fd rx7 hold a cake hold a candle 
Coming in at second place for the most disappointing car ever released is the BMW i8. What a disappointing car. There is not a soul out there that can tell me that this car lived up to expectations. We can all agree on this channel, at least, that BMW makes great cars, I feel like. I like BMWs, most of you guys probably like BMWs, and if you don't like BMWs, you can at least admit that they make pretty good cars. But when they announced that they would be making a supercar, the world kind of lost it. Everybody was incredibly excited. Then the world lost it again when they realized that they just released the car that was making less power than their M3 at the time. It's also a hybrid, which doesn't really sit well with car guys. There really isn't much about the i8 that's good. Some people can say it looks good. I disagree. I think it looks horrible. I don't think it looks good at all. I think, honestly, their M4s, their M6, their M5, their M3s, their M2s, their 1Ms, their M8 is just so much better in every way. I think the BMW i8 looks horrible. I think it's incredibly slow. It comes with a hybrid motor. It's just, it's not good. It's just not good. We needed a BMW supercar. We wanted one, but this was not it. Honorable mention. That's right, bucko. I snuck this one in here. It was kind of coming out of left field, slapping you up your willy. It's the new Subaru WRX. Well, yeah, it is. It's definitely a disappointment, but I think it is a little bit too hated, so that's why I put it at the honorable mention spot. It looks abysmal, and they dropped the STI nameplate. I guess they're not bringing back the STI, which really sucks, but the actual WRX is better in terms of performance than the previous one, and that is cool. I have a feeling that over time, this new WRX is going to start to sit better with the community but it definitely is a disappointment there's no taking away from that it's a disappointing car but i think it's going to grow a little bit over time but first place the most disappointing car of all time is without a doubt in my mind the mitsubishi eclipse cross this is the car that made me make this video i thought about this car and i was like i have to make a video of disappointing cars the eclipse just kept going downhill more and more until finally it was turned into a damn crossover suv that nobody asked for no one in the world asked for this just think about how cool the old eclipse was the gsx eclipse it was all-wheel drive came with an evo motor it had great looks and good handling it could be turned into a drag car or a race car or a tuner car it didn't matter what you wanted to do to it you could do it with the eclipse gsx before then they threw all of that away to maybe get some sales with old people using the name eclipse and it was a massive middle finger to the face of any eclipse fans and damn near killed mitsubishi as a brand to me and many others alike they have nothing nowadays they have no cool cars that makes me talk about mitsubishi they killed their only line they when they did the evo i actually have a lot of respect for them they went out with the evo x they went out with a bang that was a good car and they were like we're not going to make the evo again i liked that i understood it sucked to discontinue a car but it has to happen then with the eclipse they brought it back as a freaking crossover suv they already have crossover suvs they didn't have to add another one into the lineup but they did why to hopefully get a couple sales from old people that's that's stupid man that is so stupid i hate you mitsubishi for that that makes me so mad revert that make another eclipse and make it cool i don't know how you guys watch my videos that's the end of the video by the way but i don't know how you guys watch my videos and just sit there and like oh yeah yeah i get so flustered i get so emotional when talking about cars that make me angry i don't know how you guys sit through it all i really don't so thank you guys if you watched all the way to here because i just realized at the end of this i was like yelling at the top of my lungs in my mom's freaking basement about why i hate an, a, a, a crossover suv and you guys watched it, so I don't know who's crazier, me or you. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, next video, we've been doing, the next video hopefully is going to be a deep dive on the Mazda Protege, but that is going to be tomorrow, and tomorrow I have to go down to my uncle's house to talk to him about something, so hopefully I'll have enough time. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I love each and every one of you. 69,000 subscribers we just reached, by the way. Mind-blowing. In 1,000 subscribers more, we're doing a top 70 list. We're doing a top 70. It's going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a speed bump for sure. It's going to take a long time, but we're going to do it for to celebrate 70k subscribers. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Dasp Danya and have a nice night.